Hello everyone and welcome back to Monsters of the Mind. As always, I'm your host, Mr. G. Today we have a pretty short episode as we're talking about a monster that only appeared in one story then uh, just kind of disappeared. Today we're talking about the sea monster, Cetus. Cetus was the ancient Greek term used to refer to any large sea creature, and he was an individual. He is malevolent, he lived in the region of Ethiopia. No, not the country, the region. You see, the ancient Greeks the ancient Greeks referred to any area in Africa above the Nile as a Ethiopia. So, yeah. And he comes from Greek mythology. Cetus was a giant sea monster, often depicted as looking pretty similar to an Asian interpretation of a dragon. Cetus was created by Poseidon as revenge after the queen of, e of Ethiopia claimed that her daughter Andromeda was more beautiful than any sea nymph. So Poseidon sent the amphibious monster to attack the region. When the king and queen consulted an oracle about what to do, she told him that the monster would only go away if they sacrificed their daughter to the monster. So Andromeda was tied to a rock as C and Cetus drew closer and closer to her. Luckily, though, the Greek hero Perseus was on his way back home after killing Medusa, and when he saw the monster about to attack the princess, he showed the monster Medusa's severed head, petrifying Cetus and saving Andromeda, who went on to marry him. Now here's Vincent. Eh, don't worry about him. Petrification is only temporary. After about 200 years, uh, it, it completely wears off. So he's back to normal now, and uh, he's been very paranoid ever since, since he doesn't want to freeze again. He, uh, looks pretty traumatized, too. Actually, I've noticed that a lot of petrification victims seem pretty traumatized after they're unfrozen. Apparently, you're still conscious when that happens, and apparently your conscious is floating in a black void, com completely aware of what's going on around you, but being unable to do anything about it, and is you're unable to fully perceive anything that's going on outside of you, only getting vague perceptions at best, as you start growing more and more hopeless that you'll ever be free again. So, yeah, he's pretty fine now, besides being completely traumatized. Card time! Okay, uh, it's kind of uh, clear to me that this card is using the movie Clash of the Titans as a source. I know this because, one, it claims that he attacked uh, the city of Joppa, which is uh, not true. He attacked, the re he attacked what the Greeks referred to as Ethiopia, which, as I said earlier, was any region in Africa above the Nile. The word Joppa was actually a, is actually a biblical term used to refer to the Israeli city of Jaffa. So, that's an error right there. The back of the card also shows Perseus riding Pegasus, even though the only hero who rode Pegasus was Bellerophon. Perseus never interacted with Pegasus. And, uh, also, Andromeda's skin is, uh, too light. You see, she was an African princess, so she should have darker skin. The last error is uh, one that's actually kind of understandable, since these are children's cards, but Andromeda was described as being tied to a rock naked. Yeah, it's pretty obvious why they couldn't do that, so I don't think I'm going to deduct a point because uh, these are kids' cards. Anyway, I give this card a 7 out of 10. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any appearances of Cetus, because, uh, mostly because of the fact that the movie Clash of the Titans made it seem like the monster that attacked Andromeda was the Kraken. Now, let me make something clear. The Kraken was not from Greek mythology. It had nothing to do with Greek mythology. It comes from Scandinavian folklore, but not Norse mythology either. You, There was never any story about Thor fighting the Kraken or something like that. As such, people tend to forget that Cetus existed, and when they reference the story of Perseus, they tend to think that it was the Kraken that attacked Andromeda. So, yeah, I couldn't find any appearances. Thanks, Harryhausen. That's all for this episode of Monsters of the Mind. Join us next time when we talk about the when we talk about the goddess of war. Bye. Meanwhile, I I'm sorry. You want me to do what? You heard me. I want you to kill your best friend. If you do that, then you can get my powers. I Are you mad? I would never kill Mr. G. He, he why why would I have any reason to do that? Ah, looks like some convincing is in order. Well, where am I? You're in your own mind, Eric. So, you think Mr. G is your friend, huh? Oh, that's cute. 
If he was your friend so much, how come you're not the co-host? Instead, he had to find someone else. I mean, you know a lot about monsters. So how come he didn't get you? Instead, he had to track down a quote-unquote expert. He denied your scientific terms, and he denied your fame and fortune. The only time you ever get to be on camera is when Mr. G is mad or he's sick or something. And when you try to go on screen, Mr. G yells at you. You aren't even, you don't even qualify as a second banana. You are a banana so low in the bag that you get forgotten about and you're left to rot. And even off camera, you're not treated any better. Haven't you ever noticed how Mr. G spends a lot more time with Catherine than you? And when you are together, he listens to Catherine more than you. He barely ever considers your words as valid. He always just brushes you off never listening to a thing you say, and discrediting you like you are nothing. Your brothers are always much more famous than you. That's why your father actually liked them. He hated you, and you know it. And your mother hated you too. If she didn't, she wouldn't have left you, now would she? But... If I... But if you kill your friend and get my powers, you'll have money power and all the time in the universe so come on would hurting the purple guy really be that bad since when was the last time he ever did anything nice for you you have to practically beg to be the host of episodes but he refuses for no reason well i i, I guess you do have a bit of a point but i can't kill him he, he's my friend and Killing is wrong. Shh. All right then, Eric. I see conversations are not gonna help. I think it's time that I take some more drastic measures. You know, Mr. Jim, you're starting to make a lot more sense now that I think about it. I think I will indeed kill Mr. G and get your powers. When was the last time he ever did anything for me? Hehehehe <laughs>